Hello and welcome to this Mendex tutorial where we will be looking at marketplace modules. My name is Gavin and I'm part of the development team here at OraQ. This is our second series of Mendex tutorials. You can find our fundamental series on our channel. In this series of Mendex tutorials, we'll be looking at slightly more advanced topics to help your app to stand out from the competition. In this series, we'll be looking at customized styling, marketplace modules, reporting, and publishing and consuming REST APIs. In today's video, we'll be having a look at marketplace modules and widgets. First, we'll be looking at the maps widget to add a map with a marker into our trail event app. There will also be a part two where we will be looking at MX model reflection and the Excel importer. We will be covering installation, setup, and showing these modules in action. During the series, we'll be using the trail event app that we created in our fundamental series. Okay, adding our modules. What are marketplace modules? Marketplace modules are typically pre-built, reusable components or extensions that developers can easily integrate into their Mendex applications. These modules are designed to add specific functionalities or features to applications without the need for extensive custom coding. Marketplace modules come equipped with their own domain models and security. They also come with microflows and pages that we will use when configuring their features into our app. The Marketplace also offers a variety of widgets which provide specific functionalities and visual elements that users interact with, such as buttons, input fields, charts, and containers. The Mendex Marketplace overview documentation covers the different types of content in more detail. Mendex Marketplace modules and widgets can be published by a variety of sources, such as Mendex themselves, consulting partners, or independent developers. As you can see, when I search OraQ, my organization has created some marketplace modules that are public, meaning all Mendex users can make use of them. It is worth noting the difference between public and private modules. Public modules are available to all Mendex users, while private modules are contained, modules are contained within an organization. Private is good for if you have your own IP or any of your own reusable components you want to use for other applications. Example, your own UI resources and themes. In Mendex, modules available on the Mendex marketplace can have dependencies on other modules or resources. These dependencies can vary depending on the functionality provided by the module and the requirements of the module's implementation. These dependencies can include module dependencies, resource dependencies, version dependencies, and platform dependencies. Dependencies will be listed in the documentation of the Mendex module that will be available on the Marketplace page. So if I open a module, I'll go with our maps. So you can see on our maps module that we have official Mendex documentation here that we can view for when we're implementing our widget. This then leads us into the different support levels. In the Mendex marketplace, modules may come with different levels of support depending on the publisher's offering and the nature of the module. Here are some common support levels you may encounter. This is important to understand so you know what you're putting into your app. As we can see here with the map module, platform support is supported by Mendax themselves. There's a depreciated level, which is a platform support level that has been turned down to community support. Community, content is provided as is by members of the Mendax community and support depends on availability and effort of the owner. Partner, the content in this category is provided and supported by a partner. The partner supports this content as is when you are equipped with an SLA. Siemens, the content in this category is provided and supported by the Siemens team themselves. So that's our overview of the marketplace module complete so we can get into our first use case. In our app, we set up events for trail walks across different routes. I want to add the ability to view the start location on a map widget. So in order to do this, we need to open our Mendex Marketplace as we had before and search for our widget. I'll search for maps just to show you again. We will then select Use in Studio Pro where we can install our widget into our app. 
we will then configure the module uh, on our page and you'll be able to see it in action. Now that we're here in Studio Pro, you can see that I've added two new attributes to our root entity. I've added our start longitude and start latitude that we'll be using in our widget. First, I just need to open up our page, so root new edit, and drag in two text boxes for those new attributes. I will then configure these to be our start latitude and start longitude. Then in our toolbox, we will search for the new widget that we added, which is our maps, and drag that in. And once we double click on our widget to configure it, you'll be met with this screen, which may look scary, but it's good to refer back to the documentation that I was talking about before and the different support levels. Because this is supported by Mendax, the documentation is very thorough. So it's important to always check uh, that support level and the documentation before trying to configure any settings in here, just because there's quite a lot and you might not need to use everything. And it's good to know exactly what you need to use. So for me, I'm going to select new on the marker based on longitude and latitude. We'll set up our caption. I'll just double check that that was latitude. Yes, and longitude. Set up our caption again, select new. Longitude. Okay. And then we will need to add our dimensions. I'm going to set this to 50. Just so it's not taking up our entire screen. In advanced, we're going to use open street. And I believe that is everything we need. Actually, we just need to add ourselves a test title. We can then run our app and we can view our widget in action. So now that we have ran our app, we can go ahead and go to our roots page and on our Malvern Hills route, I'm gonna select edit route. So now that we are on our route page, we can set our start latitude, 52.11 and our start longitude, which is minus 2.33. As you can see, our map has updated and now we are in Great Malvern ready to start our route. So I can save that and that has then been updated. Our use case for MX model reflection, I previously used to store the events we create in an Excel spreadsheet. I would like the ability to implement the data in this Excel sp spreadsheet into my app in bulk. Before we can use the Excel importer module, we need to download MX model reflection as the Excel importer module is dependent on it in order to function correctly. So what is the MX model reflection? Think of model reflection as a feature that allows your Mendax application to understand and modify its own structure, access and understand its own data model, modify user interfaces dynamically and configure logic on the fly, in our case, the MX model reflection module will allow us to access our attributes and entities from the pages provided in the Excel importer module. So if I go to Studio Pro, once we download the MX model reflection module, we will want to create our own custom module because we will want to make changes to the pages that we're going to use within that module. So if I scroll up to the app, right click, add module, I'm going to name it MX Model Reflection Custom. I'm then going to drag the MX Objects Overview page down into my module or copy paste if you like, and then I'm going to rename it. So this will allow me to know uh, what page I'm using whenever I'm searching for it, just to know that it's my own. 
And the reason why I did this is I want to change our layout. So I'm gonna set this to our trail event layout. So you can see that that's been updated. And the reason why you want to do this is if you want to make a change on a page that's equipped uh, in a uh, marketplace module, if an update rolls out uh, or you need to re-download the module for any reason, your changes will be overwritten. So that's why we take a copy of the page uh, and put it into our custom module that we've just added. So the next port of call will be to update our security. So we will need to add a module role to our new module. I'll just call it admin. I'll select the page, make it visible for admin. And then I need to add that admin role to our overall administrator role in the app. So now that I'm able to access the page, I'm going to go to our navigation and I'm going to add a new sub item under admin to show the page MX objects overview custom. So now that we have added our page to the navigation, we just need to update our admin security once more to give them module model administrator underneath the MX model reflection module. Hit OK and OK and the app will have to run from the start again because we've updated security so it might take a little bit longer than normal so we'll just go to admin add new sub item i'm going to name this mx model reflection and then set it to show page the new page that we've added and then run our app I'll then sign in as our admin. And I can open up our model reflection. So on the left, you'll see our uh, modules that we've got in our app. So we only want to select the relevant ones that we'll need. So in my case, that will be the trial event app. I'll then click to refresh and you'll see all of our different entities and microflows are now available from the front end. Okay. So now that we have completed the MX model reflection, we can move on to the Excel importer now that we can access our entities. Okay, so we can now move on to our Excel importer. On screen, we can see the Excel document that I want to import into my app. You can see the different event names here, such as the Malvern Trail Walk and the Cave Hill Hike. We'll see them on our events overview page once we import them into our app. So to make a start on the Excel importer, just like with the MX model reflection, we are going to add a new module to our app and call it custom. And just like with the previous module, we need to add our new security. We also need to update our top level app security for our admin role to have access to that new role that we have created and in the marketplace modules, the Excel importer. Okay, now we just need to search for our page that we are going to customize. In this case, it will be the Excel import overview and we'll just pop that into our new module and then going to rename it to Excel import overview underscore custom it's not entirely necessary to rename the page, uh, but it's a personal preference of mine because I like to be able to find it when I'm searching for it easily. Then on the page, we just need to change the visible for to our new module role. Okay, now that our Excel importer page has been created, we just need to add it to navigation. Again, go to admin, new sub item. We'll call it Excel import. And we'll show our new page. Now 
Now we can run our app again. Sign in once again as our admin. Go to our Excel import page and you'll be met with the page that came with the module itself. So we are going to create a template by Excel file, meaning it will use the Excel document that I shown earlier to set up our headers. And you can see here the sheet number, header row number and import from. That essentially means that it'll be able to grab our sheet, which is here. It'll then grab our titles and then it'll start taking our data from row two, which is the usual layout of an Excel spreadsheet. So I will select the file. Select save and next. And then we can get into talking about the configuration of the template. So I'm going to name it our event import. We can select our Mendax object, which I'm going to select as event. Then we come to our import actions. The different import actions available are synchronized, only create non-existent objects and create a new object for each row. Synchronize will use a key field to identify which object to update based on the Excel document. Only create non-existent objects will use a, a key as well to identify which objects are not present in the database but are present in the Excel spreadsheet and import them. And create an object for each row does not require a key field and will implement all rows of the spreadsheet regardless of duplicates. In our case, we'll be setting it to create an object for each row because our events can be imported even if there's a duplicate event. Then down in our connect columns to attributes, this is where we're going to attach those columns from our spreadsheet to our attributes within our event entity. If I select this button, you'll see that all except one of them have worked. They've come up with this green tick which means that they are connected. Um, but in my case, ticket costs hasn't. So I'm going to double click into it and see why that is. My type, I'll set to attribute. I'll set that attribute to ticket cost. We can then see that the issue arose because the title in Excel was ticket costs with an S, whereas our entity did not have that S at the end causing the issue. We'll then select save. You'll see it's come up with a green tick. Then we can save the template. Now we just need to move over to the tab import files. We're going to select new. Our template is our event import that we just created. We'll browse, select our Excel document, select save, import file, and we'll get a message saying the import is finished. Now, if I go to our events, we need to look for our new events. So I'm going to take a look for the Kiev Hill hike. And if we look, here it is. Here's our Malvern Trail Walk, our Morn Mountain Trail, and our Belfast City Walk. So that means that our document has now, our data in our document has now been implemented into our Mendax app. So in conclusion, now that we've covered the downloading and installation of Marketplace modules, it's time to wrap up the video. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you in the next episode.